Would you rather be in an accident with a drunk driver or autonomous vehicle? People ask me this question all the time after they learned I work in the autonomous driving field. Letting the control go is not our strong suit. I completely understand how you feel, and I am going to share a story with you to show you how unnatural the feeling for me was when I decided to let my car take over. You're probably thinking about this is one of the stories where I tell you how my car saved my life. And congratulations, you have watched enough tech videos. And here it comes. <laughs> the past Friday, I was driving on Georgia 400 at 75 miles per hour in the left most line. A vehicle started merging into me without checking or even blinking. I shift my steering wheel slightly towards the left, and I hit my brake really hard. I ended up driving an S-shape on the highway with the possibility of crashing into my surroundings, the Jersey Berry on my left, the cars on my right, then the left again. I thought, this might be it. Until I saw the little ESP warning light was triggered. ESP stands for Electronic Stability Program. Some cars are equipped with that function. I had a driving training before, and I know when the ESP function is on, I need to work with my car to let it supervise my maneuver. It wasn't easy to let it go at that exactly moment. My training reminded me that any corrections I make will not be as accurate as my vehicle. I have a higher chance of surviving if I trusted my car. I loosely held my steering wheel. My car started correcting the speed and the direction of each wheel. It got me back on track. And next thing I know, I was driving a straight line. I was safe. My first thought after this crisis was, one of those situations was about to happen to me, considering how much I drive in Atlanta. And I'm just glad my car was ready for it. And hey, this will be a perfect, perfect opening story for my talk next week. <laughs> I guess it's true sometimes life is that convenient. <laughs> ESP is one of the many functions a fully autonomous vehicle will offer, alongside with some other features you might be familiar with. Adaptive, uh, adaptive cruise control, a line keeping assistant, and a parking assist. All these are the stepping stones that will lead us to a fully driverless future. Oops. Here today, I want to share with you how autonomous driving, alongside with other technology integrations, will reliably serve us in the urban traffic. It's projected by the year of 2030, the overall miles traveled in urban area will increase by 2.6 times, much faster than the growth rate of urban population. A new form of transportation solution was proposed to address this rapidly increasing demand. A solution where the mobility service will be offered by shared electric and autonomous vehicles. How is that going to impact our lives? It's going to make our urban travel cheaper, safer, and faster. Boston Consulting Group did a study in the New York City area. It shows a shared autonomous taxi can be as cheap as mass transit. A group of MIT researchers ran very similar experiments in Singapore region. They're able to take two-thirds of the vehicles off the road 
in traffic. Less cars means less traffic. Now, you might not suffer from traffic right now, but trust me, the rush hour in mega cities is horrifying, not to name my shame. Speaking of Atlanta, imagine you're in this standstill traffic, you look around, the gentleman on your right is swiping through Instagram posts, occasionally double-click like a few photos, and a young lady on your left is putting on her eyeliner with both hands off the bill. <laughs> Destruction like this caused many accidents. A service where offers autonomous driving can protect us from distracted drivers, as well as increase the overall efficiency. Should we just trust the technology and not worry about a thing? If I say yes, I probably will never have a career in politics, but that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I want to show you the technology at a very high level without boring you too much, but let's understand how reliable it is together. There are two essential parts of the technology, the software and the hardware. If you think of the software as our brain, then the vehicle equipped with the hardware is our body. The autonomous testing vehicles you see on the road today, they're equipped with four types of sensors, radar, LiDAR, ultrasonic, and a camera system. The software is in charge of data processing, path planning, and behavior learning. Now, they work together like our brain and the body before we make any decisions. Now, you might challenge me by saying the technology sounds reliable, the social impact is great. But if other people want to ride with autonomous vehicles in traffic to reduce the congestion, I can just benefit as well without changing my personal behavior. That's not true. You, are, you might be familiar with a phenomenon called the tragedy of the commons. Now, it's very simple. Let's have a look. You have a fish pond in your backyard, and so do I. We fish carefully, so we do, do not overfish our own resources. Luckily, there is a public pond down the road. Any extra fish we need, we can just go over there and fish all we want. The public pond is going to be depleted first. A shared public resource offers the opportunity for an individual to benefit him or herself while spreading out any negative effects across the large population. How do we handle that situation? How do we cope with that situation? The answer is quite simple. Only if there is a way we can capture the economic impacts are caused by individual inefficient choices. A quantifiable indicator is called an externality. And here comes your word of the day. In economics, an externality is the hidden cost or benefit that affects a party who did not choose to incur that cost or benefit. There are two types of externalities. Your neighbor plants a tree. Everybody in the neighborhood breathes in clean air, and that's called positive externality. We can measure that. By quantifying the positive externality, we're able to understand how much we should incentivize the individual for their good choices. Now, your neighbor, if your neighbor, leaves the truck running in the driveway, you breathe in pollutants and particles, eventually you will have to pay for a medical bill. Oh, now, that's called negative externality. We can measure that part as well. By quantifying the negative externality, we understand how much penalty an individual need and should pay back to fix the tragedy of the commons. Now, how much money exactly are we talking about? I spent a few of my doctoral years trying to figure this part out. There are three major types of 
externalities incur in the urban traffic. A congestion cost, human health cost, and climate change cost. In the urban areas within the United States, the overall negative externalities incurred in 2013 alone was $262 billion. With the adoption of autonomous driving technology at a 50% penetration rate, which means one of the two people in traffic rides with an autonomous vehicle, we're able to bring the cost down by 14%. If those vehicles are powered by electricity, we're able to bring the cost down by 52%. And even better, if we share that car with two more people, like the Uber pool feature we might have tried before, we're able to decrease the cost by 87%. And that's $220 billion we're talking about. That is exactly the amount we can use to reward people who did not cause that traffic complication. Now, if you want to think about the example to relay, think about the tax incentives for the owners of electric vehicles. We started the talk by discussing whether we would prefer to be killed by man or machine. The truth is that will never happen if engineers Scientists and the politicians have all done their jobs. Should we put drunk drivers in autonomous vehicles? Absolutely, yes. Can we take a nap when we travel? I personally can't wait for that. <laughs> Is it possible for us to offer our senior parents or kids a ride when we're occupied? Now, that's what technology will enable us to do. I understand you might not be comfortable with hopping into an autonomous vehicle just yet. Remember how hard it was for me to let it go and give up the control. But start with something simple. Maybe try out electric vehicle or share your car with someone else. A small, simple behavior change like that can also lead us to save hundreds of billions every year. If I may invite you to join me on this journey, please find one action you're comfortable with to start today. Let's build a sustainable society and a reliable future together. No more distracted drivers, no more standstill traffic, and no more wasted time and energy. Thank you.